Hey, Mission City family, uh, it's so great to be here with you today for week two of what I believe is going to be a life-changing series uh, for our church family. Already I'm hearing so many stories of how God is challenging people beyond their comfort zones into a, a God-sized commitment to say yes to Him. And I can't wait to see what else God is going to do. And, and I'm going to admit, uh, this series is already challenging me personally as well. Becky and I have been generous givers for, for lots of years. We've been trusting God and what He thought our, our yes in terms of generosity is for decades. But I'm going to tell you, even for us in our maturity, this yes season has given us a fresh challenge from God's Word about what it truly means to trust God with everything without any restrictions and to say yes to Him. Now, we're thinking through the implications of that right now, literally as we speak, as it relates to our yes commitment. And we're praying that for you as well. So if you're joining us for the first time in a life group for this series, I want to say welcome. We're so glad that you've chosen to check out uh, a group and for this yes season to participate in what God is already doing. How is it work in this series as we study the life of Abraham and how God is calling us to boldly trust him. So last week, uh, we talked through God's initial call upon Abraham's life. Remember, he was still called Abram at that time. Uh, how he called him out during a time of spiritual darkness in the land and, and sought to bring hope and life to the people through the promise that God had upon his life, the promise to make him a father of many nations. Now, this was a promise that seemed really unbelievable to Abraham because his wife was barren. Uh, Abram was 75. It seemed virtually inconceivable that he would be able to have a child with his wife, Sarah. And he, in fact, didn't have a child with her. That is, until the age of 99. At 99, God promised Abraham and Sarah a son would be born in the next year. So when Abraham reached 100, Isaac was finally born. But before that time, Abram went through many trials and situations of distrusting God, probably beyond what many of us might realize. Now, we don't often study all of the passages of Scripture because it appears as though uh, Abram was not the man we thought that he was. He doubted that God would fulfill his promise to him many, many times. In fact, he doubted it so much that he even tried to take the matters in his own hands a few times. He was so unbelieving of how God was going to make him a father of many nations uh, that he allowed himself to believe the lie that his only hope of having a son was to sleep with his wife's slave, which was his wife's idea, by the way. Uh, so he did it. A son was born out of that union, but it was not the son through whom God wanted to make a great nation. Ishmael was his name, and God still honored him with descendants, uh, but he was still not the son of whom God had promised to fulfill the gift of blessing to Abram. So in Genesis chapter 17, uh, one of the passages that we're going to look at today in our study, we're going to find that God reappears to Abram uh, to once again share with him uh, that he indeed will make him the father of a great nation. But Abraham needs to trust that God will do it as he promised. So in renewing this covenant with Abram, God tells Abram he's changing his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. So let's look at this passage starting in Genesis chapter 17 in verse 1. Uh, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. And then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. And Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you and I will be their God. God chose to renew his covenant with, with Abram and literally to change his name as a symbol of the fact that he wants Abram to focus not on his past or, or his doubts, but on the future and on the promises of God. He wants Abram to trust him. You see, this whole yes journey is about saying yes 
to God with everything that we have, including our very lives. Now, that's the whole point of this whole thing. We're saying yes to God as a church. We're saying yes to God as individuals who are, who are following after Christ with our lives as an offering to him. Did you know that the goals that we have for yes are nothing short of audacious? Uh, these goals we believe are given us by God and that they're so big that they cause us to rely upon him alone. See, our, our two goals for the yes initiative are 100% engagement and $18 million. Uh, one is an outflow of the other. See, our, our primary goal, or, or better, God's primary goal in this YES initiative, is to see 100% of us, literally all of us, go before Him and have a life-changing encounter with Him as it relates to our faith and generosity. We pray that 100% of us would boldly trust Him with everything and say yes to Him in our generosity like never before. I believe with my whole heart that God is only just getting started with Mission City. And so we as a church are, are planning for the largest mission building steps that we've ever taken to engage people where they are with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to lead them in the lives of transformation. And if 100% of us boldly trust God and say yes to Him, then that might mean 15 million of generosity, or it might mean 20 million of generosity, or it might mean more, but we know that it's gonna be exactly what God wants it to be. Because his word is clear. It's clear on one thing. He wants 100% of us, all of us, to live our lives in a radically generous way, uh, which is what we at Mission City Church have believed for a very long time. And this season's no different. I wanna encourage you, do not stay comfortable. Do not dwell on your past. Do not dwell on even your present. Focus on your future. God wants to give you a new name. Just as he renews this covenant with Abram in Genesis chapter 17, God is saying to us, I have a plan for you. You just need to trust me. You just need to say yes. So I've got this. Do not allow your situation of the unbelief from your past to name you. Trust me, walk boldly with me and say yes, and you'll experience the new name that I have for you. Let's pray together. God, again, we come to you and just thank you that we get to be a part uh, of what you're doing, that you call us into something bigger, that you call us to trust you, not just in the season, but to trust you with our entire lives. God, we pray for wisdom as we discern how you would have us participate. Uh, Lord, that we would truly say yes to whatever it is you have for us. God, we thank you for our church. We thank you for the mission of our church, of what you're doing in our church, and for each person that makes up Mission City Church. God, again, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. I'm Mike, and my wife Debbie and I have uh, three sons, three daughter-in-laws, 10 grandkids, uh, and we've been a part of Mission City for about 14 years. We moved to uh, San Antonio in 2008, and when we first got to, to Mission City, uh, we visited the services and a couple of different life groups and found a life group where we felt very comfortable, the, the uh, lessons were great, the people were great, welcoming, and we just felt like it was a place we needed to be a part of. One of the highlights was uh, we went on the uh, Israel trip with Pastor Matt's group about uh, four years ago, and that was just that was a tremendous time for us. And we kind of see things in the Bible a different way now. Tithing has been important for us, and it's been something that's been in our family. It was taught by my parents, and then I've tried to teach my sons the same thing. My oldest son, who's now in his 40s, when he was probably five or six, was a very young boy, we started to give him an allowance. And so one Saturday night, I went into his bedroom and, and I was gonna to try to teach him about tithing. Back in those days, you had a little white offering envelope that you marked every, turned in every Sunday with your offering and whether you brought your Bible and all, you know, check all the boxes. So anyway, on Saturday night, we sit down on his bedroom floor and said, here's your allowance. Your allowance was a dollar back, way back then. And, and said, here's 10 dimes, and 10 dimes is, is a dollar. And so I want to teach you about what's called tithing. So we laid the 10 dimes out on the floor, 
and got his little offering envelope and I said, okay, now God's word says that for every 10 things you get and above money, you, one goes back to God. And I said, do you understand that? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, so take, take your, off, your tithe and put it in your envelope. And instead of getting one dime, he picked up five or six and put them in the envelope. And so I said, let's go through this again. And so we put the dimes back down again. I explained, one goes to God. So take, put your tithe in your envelope. And uh, again, he picks up five or six dimes and puts them in the envelope. And I said, you just really don't see, you're not really understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Why are you putting more than one in your envelope? And he said, because I love Jesus. So I went in to teach him a lesson about tithing and he ended up teaching me a lesson about the real reason we give. Well, I would hope as uh, more and more people learn about the, the uh, YES initiative that uh, they would be united. I think that's important in a church that the members are united in purpose and, and mission, and uh, this is a great opportunity to get everyone excited and working together. I'm Mike, and I'm saying yes. <laughs>